and we're back and we are ready to try and get Bilbo down closer to 60 cards so last VOD and first half of this stream we got him down from 180 to 160 so we got 20 cards off of the list so we just need to do that five more times and we'll be good here we go all right so what are we gonna cut now should i do another sub list and figure out what other things i need to cut lighten tutor withering boon vamp tutor soul warden bible wood elves Again, it's possible I don't need Crawl Space or Silent Arbiter. That's true, I can probably get rid of the Silent Arbiter. I don't need to restrict my opponents attacking each other. So. Oh, did I already get rid of Silent Arbiter? Okay. Fair enough then. Alright, so. That just leaves the Crawl Space and the. Um, the directional attacking. Maybe I don't need the directional attacking one from Commander then. Like, I already cut the other thing. Crawl space is fine because it restricts what can attack me specifically. And I think that's good to have. It also stops me from getting killed by a uh, infinite creature effect. You know... Um, any Kiki combos, Splinter Twin type things that happen to happen. Get around those, but if I can be attacked by the person that can do that, then Mystic Barrier doesn't really do anything. Also, once we get down to two players, it does nothing, whereas Crawl Space, you know, if everybody else concedes and one person is stubborn, that becomes a dead card, whereas Crawl Space still limits what they can attack me with. Crawl Space is only a dead card when all of my opponents only have two or less creatures and they want to attack me. Let's be honest, this deck is probably doing okay if that's the case. Unless it's like Ulamog and he's exiling 20 cards at a time and he's indestructible so I can't make them sacrifice him. Or make, or destroy him rather. Because No Mercy destroys, Tasa destroys I believe. Yeah, how the other No Mercy effects work? Um, Tasa, is that not how you spell her name? Oh, I put the S in front of the Y, didn't I? Yeah, she destroys, uh, what's the, oh, Dread. Dread is the other No Mercy. Yeah, so all of them are destroyed, so indestructible creatures get around almost everything. It's only uh, Michiko that can make them sacrifice it, and they can always lose their other stuff first, so... She's not really helping either, but most of our effects exile, so this hypothetical Ulamog that is crashing in for a turn or two probably shouldn't be an issue. Like, he needs to be protected on multiple fronts in order for me to not be able to hit him. Now, granted, if they can do that, they're going to win, but if they could do that, they were going to win through a lot of other things anyway, so it's not really a big deal. That's my fault for not actually being set up to win the game. Only caring about not dying. Mentor of the Meat, Shattered Angel, Silvac Outcast, Karn Liberated, Awakening Zone, Avenger. Oracle. 
Rebel Arc, Idyllic Tutor. I keep coming back to the Idyllic Tutor. I might be able to cut that one, despite all of the powerful enchantments I have going on in the deck. We have Demonic and Vamp to go get important things, and Enlightened also. The problem is, is that a lot of my things are, in fact, enchantments that I want to tutor for. Get things going. It's possible we don't need Rune Tail. Like, Rune Tail's two big things are it stops red mass removal, and it, um, without, like, it stops it against my things only. So everybody else's stuff still dies to Blasphemous Act, but mine doesn't. Uh, and the other thing is, as long as it's in play, I can block, like, anything and be fine. I do have to be careful, like, I shouldn't just throw things in front of stuff to prevent damage. I should actually be doing it because I need to do it in case Runetail explodes in the middle of combat and all of, all of a sudden my things can take lethal damage now. Champion, Well of Lost Dreams, Solemn Simulacrum, Lean and Elder. <clears throat> Do I not need survival in this deck? I have Recruiter of the Guard and um, the Ranger of Eos that can tutor for most of my creatures. Plus Demonic Tutor and um, Vampiric Tutor. On the other hand, I also have things like Abiding Grace where I could discard my one-drop creature and get it back at end of turn while tutoring for one of my other creatures. And just saying that out loud sounds really good. Like, I'm going to discard this Soul Warden and I'm going to tutor Avenger of Zendikar. And at the end of the turn, I'm going to put Soul Warden into play. Yeah, that seems good. A lot of the things this deck is capable of seem really good, so just have to figure out what ones I don't want. Compared to the others, anyway, because I want all of these at this point. Like, the deck has a ton of fun stuff in it that's stopping my opponents from winning the game, and... I just want to play these cards and have fun, and I'm sad that we have to cut so many of them. Like, we literally have to cut another hundred cards off this list. Did I cut a card and then not? I feel like I cut one card, like the attack left or right card. Did I not actually get it off the list yet? Yep, that's my removal. Back up. Fiction Karlov. Yeah, I did cut that card off of the list, and now... And I didn't knock the thing down one. Okay. So we are at 159 now. So I only need 99 cuts. That'll be good. But yeah... Um, I like all of these cards now, so everything I cut makes me a little sad. What else? Crawl Space, Deranged Hermit, No Mercy, Replenish, Sky Shroud Claim... Our shards. Alright, maybe take a look at my ramp. See what I've got going on. See if I can make a cut or two there. Alright. Sit up again, because I'm starting to slouch. Get Soul Ring. Creed, Library, Ashes, Dust. Features Lore. 
Bro, Tudor, Withering Boot. What else is a ramp card? All space, Deranged Hermit. Ranger's a ramp card. Flame is a ramp card. Simulacrum. Wit. Chico, Rune Tail, Far Seeks a ramp. Yeah, Crucible isn't a ramp, it just guarantees that I hit my land drop every turn while I have um what's its names? Um fetch lands in my graveyard. Which given the way I build decks is pretty consistent. I'll have at least one in there at any given point in time. Red Tudor. I didn't miss anything, right? I feel like I scrolled past a couple cards a bit too fast. Okay, yep, didn't miss anything. Arc, wound reflection, fracturing gust, polluted bonds. Ranger, lapse, path, oracle. Eh, oracle's kind of ramp in that it, let, it lets me play extra lands and it lets me play lands off the top of my deck, so... It's in there for that effect, primarily, so. Uh, Awakening Zone is ramp, because once it's out, I keep making mana dorks every turn. Uh, Vencer's Journal, Fangreen Marauder. Or Nevermore, Closet. Burnished Heart is ramp. Champion. Forcer is not ramp. It doesn't let me play additional lands, so. Eternal Pilgrim, Unmaking, Decked in Stone. Excavator, Settle. Hive isn't in here to be ramp. It does give me extra mana if people can't pay for it, but its primary focus is to generate tokens that are then generating more tokens for me while hopefully constricting what opponents can and can't do. Like, either it's constricting them or it's giving me tokens, which in turn make Chatterfang and Peregrine better. Maybe Smothering Tithe isn't good enough to be in this deck. The nice thing about the treasure tokens is they gain me life from coming in for the Arbiter and going out for the Fangren, so I'll have to consider it more. Um, Gilded Goose's Ramp. Alchemist is technically Ramp. Like, once I have this in play, I should have huge amounts of mana. Um, similarly, Belladros gives me a ton of mana if I need her to. Like, that's half the reason she's in the deck, is to refund all of my mana for a turn. Sunderated man. Arda. Lotho is in here to ramp, like, players are going to play two spells a turn, and I am going to get a treasure from that. There's no option for them to not do that other than to not play two spells, and I can play two spells and ramp with him, so. I still have control over whether or not I get a treasure from him. Three visits. Cultivate. Ranger's Path. Faith Mender, Angelic Accord, Archive. Joel Fenlurker, Idol, Recruiter. Hit. Chain 
Signet is ramp. Angel Karlov. Reclamation. It's not ramp. Even if I use it, it's still just guaranteeing I hit a land drop. Not proving it. Uh, Black Market makes a treasure every turn, so that is ramp. Sealman, Gaffer, Gwahir, Prize Pig is ramp. Bilbo, Farmer Cotton, Celestine, and the Commissar. Which are the Moors? And that's it. Okay. Bottom. Now I can do my ramp list. Ring check. More Wood Elves. Ranger, Claim, Akram, Seek, Goal, Awakening Zone, Burnished Heart, Gilded Goose, Accomplished Alchemist, Veladros, Lotho, Three Visits, Cultivate, Ranger's Path, Arcane Signet, Black Connections, Prize. Yeah, I do not have room for all of these. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I have 20 ramp cards. That is a third of the room I have in my deck. <clears throat> so some of these are going to have to go. Okay. I think we get rid of Cultivate. Like, the other ones that get me one land into play are cheaper, and... The other ones that get me two lands get them both into play immediately. Not that it matters because they're going to come into play tapped. The other ones can get me dual lands though. Like Ranger's Path gets me... They have to be dual lands that are forest, so I can only get like savannas and uh, bayous. I can't get like scrubland type lands. That's a little bit annoying, but... I guess I cut the Granger because the Echo is not going to be reasonable. No, sad robot. Those are the only two comes into play get me lands. Burnished Heart has to die to get me the two lands into play, so I have to be able to spend the, I think it's three mana to activate it. Maybe I'm okay cutting Burnished Heart too then. I also can't get it back with a bunch of my things. The only thing I can get it back with, I think, is things that get anything back and like uh, Revel Arc are the only two things that can get back Burnish Heart, so. Yeah, it's close, but I think we can get rid of it. It also does, like, I can cast it on three and use it for ramp, but I'm not getting access to the mana until turn five anyway, most likely. Because I'm going to cast it and then not be able to activate the same turn. Or I have to have five mana or six mana before I can activate in the same turn. So 
I'm probably going to take two turns, at which point Sad Robot also takes two turns, but the second turn after I've played him, I have the mana. Or I have the mana at the same time I would from Sad Robot is more accurate. Um, like Burnished Heart comes down, then the next turn I have to spend the mana on Burnished Heart, and then the turn after that I have two extra lands, whereas I play Sad Robot on that turn that I would have sacrificed the lands to the Burnished Heart, and then next turn I have one more land. Eh, it's a trade-off. I also have a couple ways to blink him, and blinking Burnished Heart doesn't help, so... It's close, but... There's also an argument to be made for keeping the Burnished Heart in and getting rid of the Wood Elves, but the Wood Elves are a 1-1, one -one, so they can be retrieved with the Vesper Lark also in addition to some of the other cards I have going on. Like, maybe I should actually be running um, Sakura Tribe Elder instead. Get rid of the Wood Elves entirely. Because the Wood Elves can only get a... The Wood Elves can get a Forest, though, so they can get Bayou and Savannah cards. But, and the, um, two Triomes, like the actual Triome and the Painland Triome. Um, hmm. Like, it's actually close how, like, the Wood Elves have more variety on what they can get. The Sakura Tribe Elder is cheaper. The Wood Elves also get their card and then stay in play to be blinked, whereas the Sakura Tribe has to die. And I only have, like... If the Sakura Tribe Elder could be gotten back with, like, a Binding Grace or something, if it was, like, one power creatures instead of one casting cost creatures, then maybe... So, should one of the other ramp cards be Sakura Tribe Elder instead? <clears throat> like, Nature's Lore, or... Three Visits, or Farseek? Farseek's the most versatile because it can get any of my dual lands. So that one definitely stays in. <clears throat> Arcane Signet is all of my colors. Three visits and Nature's Lore get me a um, forest, which can be one of the dual lands or triomes. And we're not bothering with Rampant Growth, so... I think we would run Steve over Rampant Growth, though. So the question is, do we want him more or less than, say... Like, should I cut one of the Sky Shroud claims that gets me two lands and have a Sakura Tribe Elder instead? So that way I have cheaper ramp in the deck? Because I don't need a ton of mana, I just need to get lands down early so I can afford to, like, cast my creatures and do something, because I have a bunch of, when I gain life, I can do other stuff, and I want the mana to do the other stuff. Like, I want to be able to draw cards off Dawn of Hope, or, um, or off of the Mentor of the Meek, or I want to be able to pay for Well of Lost Dreams to draw as many cards as possible. <clears throat> So getting the ramp and then getting to the point where I can cast that card and gain life and draw cards in the same turn would be ideal. Or, you know, ramp and cast Mentor and cast another creature and draw the card. You know, the five or six mana that would cost. Do that with any kind of consistency. So do I want a Sakura Tribe Elder instead of one of the, one of the more expensive ramp cards? Maybe. If we cut Sky Shroud Claim and Ranger's Path, and then we put in Sakura Tribe, 
So we'd be cutting the two cards, but we'd only get one actual cut at that point. I think I like that a little bit more. Like the four mana ramp cards, we only have a couple of cards that pay us off for uh, landfall, specifically for life gain. Like I think we're back down to just the courser, right? So we cut these, but then we add in Sakura Tribe Elder. I believe is from original Kamigawa. Like the first set champions. Yeah, he's from Champions. <clears throat> so, Sky Shroud. I was just thinking that. I was like, I think I have like one or two other Rangers. So I'll put in Path, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is going to give me Path to Exile. All right, Burnished. Oh, I spelled it all out. I'm pretty sure Burn would have gotten it. Ranger is the last thing from Yavamaya here. Cultivate. Go to Champions. Sun's Champion. Sun's Champion, Champions of Kamigawa, Sakura Tribe Elder, and then a green for a Snake Shaman, I believe. Yep. Hey. So we have one, two, three, four, five, but we added a card, so we knock four off the list. Brings us down to 155. All right, we're getting there. <sighs> Stretch a bit. Sore muscle in the middle section of my back. That's decided it's gonna act up now. So we clear all. What do we got now? That was my ramp. <sighs> do I need to do my life gain like just straight up and give a solid evaluation of each card, make sure I'm gaining the most life possible reasonably? Like. Eh, we probably need to do something that extreme for this deck. Because it's kind of hard to cut some of the life gain cards when I don't have the context of what the other life gain cards are. Alright. Hey. Also, I'm pretty sure I don't have Souls Attendant on here. Souls Attendant, all creatures. Another creature enters the battlefield, I may gain one life. So yeah, I don't think I actually have that one. I think I somehow managed to skip over it. I don't know that we need all three of the originals, like the two white soul sisters and the green one. That's a color shifted of the white one. Like, we've cut a bunch of the ones that only affect... Um, my creature specifically. Okay, I want to make sure, because I just realized, like, this is the only life gain card I've got up until, um, Mirrodin. But, yeah, it is. Okay. A well pays me off. Ariok Champion is another soul sister. That has protection from two colors. Go, Runetail, Farseek. Leyline, Angel's Grace, Jodon of Corliss gain me life. Essence Warden is the green soul sister. Some idyllic tutor, Revel Arc, Loon Reflection. Hmm. 
Fracturing Gust. Polluted Bonds gains me life. Death Greeter. Nine. Ten, eleven, bow has the life gain on it, so let's count. That's twelve. Courser's thirteen. All right, I'm not forgetting what Bow of Nylea does. Does two damage to a flyer, one one counter. Gain three life, yep, okay. Does actually gain me life. I'm like, am I misremembering that though? For some reason I was thinking it gained me um, two life and I'm like, am I confusing that with the two damage that it can deal? Uh, we have a bunch of lands that gain me life when they come in on their own. I don't know how many of them were actually running. Uh, Sun Scorch gives me life. I can gain life from Ailey. Not much, though. And she's not in here to gain me life. She's in here for the ability to sack a creature to exile a non-land permanent. So I don't think I count her. Since life gain is not her primary function. And her way of gaining life is actually pretty weak overall. Hope. Spark. Gilded Goose. Gilded Goose does make food. Food is life gain. The Lurus has lifelink, but I'm not really attacking with him all that much. He can gain me life, but... Valkyrie Harbinger, on the other hand, I'm more likely to attack with as a large flyer than a 3-2 on the ground. Um, Velodros gives me the 1-1 tokens, but again, I'm primarily gaining life off of them um, when they die, so I'm not gaining life immediately unless I have one of the other things going on. Uh, Lysa is frequently attacking, if I can, for life. Or if I need to for life, rather. Like, she can comfortably attack. Uh, Inspiring Overseer is on the list because it gains me life. We're on 20 of 24. I'm not counting the ones that increase the life gain. I need the actual effects that gain me life in the first place. 21. 22. So we're up to Sagarda, but I think I need to come down here and like actual life gain. Start off with the Soul Warden. Yeah, Elder, Ariok Champion, Children of Corliss, Essence Warden. Boon Reflection. Actually, Boon Reflection shouldn't be on here, because it it only gains me life once I'm gaining life. So, much like the reason I didn't put the um, like the Knight and the Honor Troll on there, Boon Reflection itself is not life gain. It just increases the amount of life I gain when I do gain life. Shattered Angel... Leah, Corsair, Sun Scorch, Campbell, Dawn. Oops. Of course, that time I click once and it does it. All the other times it's like, no, you gotta click twice if you want this thing to happen. The Goose. Three. 
Lysa, Overseer, Oldred, Might, Spectrum. Okay. We are all. We are on Sagarda. Alright. Uh, Lotho, Peregrine took. That's not gain me life on his own. He gains me life when I do other things. I don't know if I include him or not because of that. Kind of similar to the Battle of Bywater. Like, the Bywater is there to be a wrath. I guess Peregrine is in there to make food tokens. Like, I would count the Shire because it's making food tokens. But the battle is in here to be a wrath, and then if it happens to gain me life afterwards, that's, you know, a bonus. Like, I'm not casting it in order to gain life, though. Um, I will count the Sarah Ascendant, because it is definitely in here to attack and block and gain me the sixth life. Uh, Faith Mender needs me to gain life, same with Archive. Uh, this thing is capable of gaining me life on its own. It's primarily in there as a payoff, though. Like, I could see... The main reason not to cut it is I can gain 5-plus life without having to activate it. Uh, Johnny is more in here for his pseudo-ultimate, and then afterwards, if if I don't need that... Like, I'm disinclined to cast this as Johnny just to keep gaining life off of him. I'm more inclined to cast him to zero and exile all of our opponent's stuff, so... Uh, oh, Angel of Vitality was the other. When I gain life, I gain more life. Worthy, Vesper Lark, Winds, Abiding Grace. Abiding Grace will gain me life if I don't have a dead one drop, so it is a life gain source. A Sithis is in here to gain me life and draw me cards. Like, it is in here for both reasons. Uh, Starion is only in here to gain me life. He only gains me life if I've gained life. He is a Death Touch lifelink creature, but he feels more like he's in the Rogue's Faith Mender category. Uh, so the Angel. Karlov is a payoff for gaining life. A Vain Witch Coven is a payoff. Perfect. The gaffer is a payoff. Gwahir is a payoff. Farmer Cotton is in here to gain me life. That that is a thing he does. Um. Yeah, both Celestine and the commiss and the commissar are here to gain me life. And to do extra things top of that, so. Delete those. Was there anything under Peregrine? No. Okay. Grace, Sithis, Armor Cotton, Celestine, and the Commissar. Alright. So, originally I had the Spectrum Sentinel on the list because it's gaining me life when opponents play non-basic lands, but we have Polluted Bonds and Shattered Seraph to gain life when opponents play lands, so I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and cut that one. Like, it's a cute trick. It's a one-mana creature that's relevant in the deck, so I can bring it back with a bunch of my stuff to cut it, but same difference. But at the same time, we have other cards that are doing this way better. Like, the Shattered Seraph gains me three, and the Polluted Bonds drains two. Maybe Celestine's another one that I don't need. Like, I have 
several effects like this, like the Vain Witch Coven, and I have a bunch of other reanimate effects. She can get back my larger things, but I have a few other ways to do that, and on her own she gets me back things with 3 CMC or less to start with. Then I can get back other stuff if I can gain more life off of the other things each turn. Do I actually need the Commissar? I can pay two and sack a creature to gain two life and draw a card. I probably don't need the Commissar either. Like, I don't care about the attacking makes opponents lose life thing. So yeah, I think I can cut the Commissar. Um... I can also probably cut the Inspiring Overseer. I've gotten rid of a bunch of my Blink cards, and I have other things to let me draw anyway. And I've cut a few of the things that care about me, specifically having Angels and or Clerics, which she is both of, and therefore triggers some other things going on. I can probably cut Campbell. I don't think I need to yet, but we need room. Like, the Sunscorch region is giving me a life no matter what spell my opponent casts, whereas Campbell is draining them to if they cast a non-creature. And while there are a lot of non-creature spells... I feel like Campbell's primary thing is going to be to gain, like, two to six life before he dies to one of the non-creature spells. He is relatively cheap, though, and he is gaining me life when opponents do things. But so is Sunscorch Regent, so I think I can cut Campbell. The upside to Campbell is that he's a 2-3, so he gets underneath all of the removal spells that I have that kill a lot of things. That's, an, like, another plus in his thing, but... We do not have room for all of this, is the issue. One, two, three, four... Is there one more card I know I want to cut off of this list? It might legit be Campbell. Yeah, I think it is. Also, I'm debating Peregrine Took. Like, making the 1-1 one -one, uh, squirrels is helpful because there are more creatures entering the battlefield. Uh, my primary ways for gaining life off of artifacts, besides the fact that they are themselves food tokens, is the Leonin and the Fangren. One gains me life when they come in, the other one gains me a ton of life on their way out. So... Those are both possible... I could also see cutting uh, Sithis, despite the number of enchantments I have. Like, I'm drawing cards off of a ton of other things, including a bunch of the enchantments themselves. The fact that she gains me life when I cast them, in addition to drawing me the cards, kind of pushes her into wanting to stay, but all of the things do stuff like that, so. Alright, let's cut these five. Campbell... Seer. Go to the Warhammer section and cut both of these in one go. And the Spectrum Sentinel. Oops. 
two, three, four, five. Down to 150. We continue to make progress. We are closing in on the two hour mark, not quite there yet. Let's clear all of this. All right, let's start at the top and work our way through again. E Tutor, Soul Ring, Swords, Greed, Library. Maybe Sylvan Library can go. What were my other card draw things? What do I still have? Card draw stuff. This is Mana Ramp. I remove Bull. With Sithis, we have the One Ring, Bolus of Citadel, Dawn of Hope, Mentor, Well, Necro, Greed. I feel like I might be able to cut Necropotence or Sylvan Library, and given the choice between the two of those, I think I cut Sylvan Library because Necropotence is just way too efficient in giving me cards. Sylvan Library is limited to 8 life for 2 extra cards a turn, which is still very doable in this deck, but... Yeah, okay. I think I can talk myself into cutting Sylvan Library. If I was not running black, if this was a white-green deck, I think I would need Sylvan Library, because there aren't enough other... Um, hard draw spells that let me tra uh, trade that much life. Okay, so Sylvan Reclamation. Let me trade that much life for cards out of black, so I do think I need, I would need Sylvan Library at that point, but since we have access to all the black card draw for life exchange, I don't think we need that, at least the ones that are legal in Commander, because obviously we would 100% be, be running um, Yawgmoth's um, Bargain and um, Crystal Brand in this deck, if we could. Bull Warden, Survival of the Fittest, Wood Elves, Plenish, Aura Shards, Elder, Sad Robot, Well of Lost Dreams, Ariok Champion, Crucible, Eternal Witness, Eternal Witness might be able to go. We have a bunch of other stuff that buys back our things, and we have fewer ways to blink now. I'm wondering if we even need um, Panharmonicon and uh, Elish Norn. Elish Norn is fine because it's stopping opponent stuff also, so maybe I just don't need the Panharmonicon. Uh, the Void, Angel's Grace, Children, Essence, Mischief, Keeper, Dread, Tutor, Revelark, Boon Reflection. Maybe I don't need the Revelark and the Vesper Lark at the same time. Gaia, Venter, Awakening Zone, Venser's Journal, Broader, Liberated, Malera, Soul Mentor, Nevermore, Avacyn, Closet, Nate, Lisa, O Champion, Courser, The in Stone. Like, the more I think about it, the primary reason to double up on comes into play triggers is that I have a bunch of things that gain me life when creatures come in, and they have their own comes into play abilities on them. But maybe I don't need specifically the Panharmonicon, like... We already have Norn, and she's better at it. 
her main drawback being that she's a creature and dies to a lot more stuff. But I don't think we need the Panharmonicon. At least Norn is inhibiting the opponents while helping us until she dies, whereas the Panharmonicon is not, unless the comes into play trigger is. And being able to blink those things with Conjurer's Closet and um, Teleportation Circle should be more than enough anyway. Like if we're blinking Luminate Primordial every turn or something along those lines and we're doing all right with it, we don't need Panharmonicon too. Possible we don't need the Shield, or not Shield Red, the Norn either, but like I said, at least she's um, doing things to mess with the opponent while giving us extra triggers, so. Ascendant, Faith Mender, Angelic Accord. It's also possible I have too many of the increase my life gain cards like maybe we don't need boon reflection when we have faith mender i'll hammer its archive all of the ones that add one to it uh, we probably end of the day we don't need uh astios or whatever his name is the half elf vampire was he from Baldur's gate i think he's from battle for Baldur's gate actually asterion that's his name yeah, we probably don't need him either. Thing else, because we're getting close to time. I think that's going to do it for right now. Like, I don't think I'm going to make much more headway in the next couple minutes that I would have. So, 48, 47. Could I find two more cards? Get down to 145. Doubtful right now. I'm a little burnt out from staring at this list over and over again. I think we can call it here. All right. So that's going to do it for me for now. Um, I'll get my brother and then get him to work. So I'll probably be on later. I might try drafting. I did a draft last night that would so, so incredibly poorly. It was so uninteresting. I'm not even going to bother posting the VOD. Like, I don't mind showing myself losing because I've got a ton of videos like that where I just like 03. But it wasn't even interesting. It was just, oh, hey, I didn't draw enough of my one color. Oh, hey, I flooded out. Oh, hey, this third deck like the third game was the most interesting one and they managed to race me with double um fiery inscription versus my damage so but at least that was a interesting game where i was doing stuff that was relevant like the other two games it's like i'm gonna cast spells and they don't matter they literally don't matter none of this matters the opponent is going to win this game so yeah that was not fun at all and then I went, like, 0-2 and dropped at the FNM. Like, yesterday was a terrible day to play Magic. I kept, like, flooding out or color-screwing most of my games. So, yeah. We might try today to see if today's a better day to play Magic. Or I might do something else. I don't know. We'll have to see. But that's going to do it for me for right now. So, thank you for watching. And I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.